please welcome to the stage Mr. Larry Haas. I remember hearing Larry over the past couple years saying, what are you going to do if I die on your stage? Thank you, sir. Elvis Presley died in 1977. Since his passing, there's approximately 40 to 50,000 Elvis tribute artists all around the world. When that happened that night with Larry, that's all I could think about, you know, was losing another Elvis. He was born and raised on a dairy farm. He was always an Elvis fanatic. He just loved Elvis. Once I met him, I just knew that that was the love of my life. I knew it the first night I met him. La Crosse is a, really a unique city, kind of a Shangri-La. It's the way it was, and it's, it's, it's kind of like stepping back in time. It's a river town. It's a blue-collar town. It's a working town. It was in the Guinness Book of Records for the most bars on one street at one time. We're the greatest Green Bay Packers sports bar of all time. If you don't like to drink beer, you don't want to come here. Elvis's death was received with such disbelief, not only in America, but around the world. I didn't even believe he was gone. Because of the private nature of Elvis's death, Elvis's death has always been for many people something that could be put off or left to conjecture, well, maybe he's not really dead. I was in denial. The strange thing was that the night before he actually performed at the Elvis Explosion, he said that Elvis came and talked to him and told him that he would do a great job at the show and he'd be seeing him real soon. He knew that this probably would be his final performance. The stress of being on a stage would definitely contribute to your you know, rise in blood pressure. He had a new costume and fitted him a little tight. He wanted it tight because that's how Elvis wore it. I thought it was just some big joke for a second because there is no way this could possibly be happening. No way. The beat of rock and roll, the speed of rock and roll, the energy and vitality of rock and roll, all of which was epitomized by Elvis, somehow planted the seed of a dream that probably is one of the, the deepest dreams of uh, human imagination, and that is to live forever. When people say, oh, I don't want to die, I say, well, that's what we're living for because we know we're going to die.